Aside from changing your wheels, fitting graphics to your car will make the fundamental biggest change to the way that the car looks and feels to you. So today we are fitting one of our very own decal kits, which you can find on our website, and we're gonna show you how. Having us fit it means getting your car here, and of course there's an extra cost in it, but actually there's a very easy way to do this at home. So if you wanna go and change the appearance of your car, you'll be able to. So other than the decals themselves, the only bits of equipment that we need for this job are a roll of masking tape, some very sharp, preferably brand new razor blades, and a squeegee. Now don't worry, I don't expect everybody to have this at home. We'll send you one in your graphics kit from us. If you're doing a full graphics kit, which includes your nose, bonnet, and scuttle section, as well as having the windscreen off, which in truth is optional, you can leave it on and just tuck it under the windscreen. To get it properly, you need to have it off. You also need to make sure that you've removed your windscreen washer jet and the two poppers which sit on top of the scuttle, as well as making sure that you've taken the grill out of your nose cone. And when you put your nose cone back on again, make sure that all of the fasteners are done up properly and that each of the three parts of the car are sitting as they will when the car is usually together. Otherwise, once you put the stripes on, they wouldn't line up. Our graphics kits, when you order them, will come with the holes already cut out for things like your nose cone badge, and your louvers, which are on the center of the bonnet. So any car after the early 90s is going to have these. Some have seven louvers, particularly the older cars will have seven louvers. Newer ones have five. And if you're ordering your kit from home, you need to tell us what size chassis you have, how many louvers you have in your bonnet, and the shape of your nose cone badge. There were, for a period of time, square nose cone badges coming out of Caterham and obviously we'll need a different kit for that. So starting with the nose cone, we're going to arrange this so that the badge is right in the middle of this ring. Take a piece of masking tape and lay it straight across and then another piece directly below it. Now make sure that this stripe has been pressed tight to the bodywork so that that's nice and flat and locked into place. We're then visually offering ourselves upwards and working from here in a straight line forwards. To ensure that we're keeping the line straight, it's really important to make sure that you keep your hand pressed onto the stripes and slide it backwards to remove any or misshapenness. It's not about getting air out, it's about making sure that the stripe goes on straight. So starting from the nose, once you've pushed that out, you can put your piece of masking tape on, just pop it on the stripe first, then push that through to make sure it's straight and apply those either side. Once you've done the nose, which is based around the nose cone badge, you slowly go backwards up the bonnet, ensuring that everything's in line with itself. It's really important to note that before we start applying any stickers to your car, your car has to be immaculately clean and completely dry. Now that we're happy that the stripes are completely lined up, we're going to start sticking. Now the hardest part of sticking them down is keeping the lines straight and preventing them from wandering in various directions. So my best top tip for keeping them straight is applying an anchoring point. Now that's simply a thicker piece of masking tape, which we're going to put across the center of the bonnet. So again, just lay that on the stripe, making sure it's still completely flat and give that a good stick on either sides. This should prevent the stripe from twisting one way or another as we lay it down. Now that we're ready to start applying, remove your top piece of masking tape and peel this back. So what we're going to do is remove the backing paper from the stripes. Obviously while you're doing this, make sure that the stripes actually stay attached to the front face of the paper. We're now going to take our very, very new knife and cut the backing paper off as close to our anchor as possible. Now to do that, pull your backing paper into a bit of tension, place the blade in the middle of the piece of paper, pierce it, and then you can slide outwards. This will give you a really clean finish and prevent you from having bits of paper 
stuck underneath your stripes. Starting from your anchor point and in the middle, apply pressure onto your squeegee straight through the middle and start sticking down your stripe. You only want to do a few inches initially and then from there we're pushing outwards to the edges, making sure that we keep a, a firm contact patch and therefore making sure that any air pockets are removed. Obviously louvres are in the way half the time, but... Now, as we approach the louvres, these can be a little bit tricky. I would advise letting this just sit down as it wants to, and then just gently sticking down the edges. And that should keep us straight as we get to the top. And then starting once again in the middle, push back ever so slightly to get a good stick. And then we can just finish our bonnet piece at the top. Now that this section of the stripe is laid, this has become our anchor. So we no longer need this piece of tape across the middle. We're also going to remove the piece of tape at the other end. Fold your stripe back and remove your backing paper. For longer sections of stripes, it's worth actually keeping that there so there isn't too much stick left over. It's easy to lose control of this and if it falls on the ground or, or gets any muck into it, you're never going to remove it. Pull this back with just a little bit of pressure, but keeping it off the bonnet where it hasn't yet been pushed down by the squeegee. And then we're just gonna carry on where the last stripe left off. Now these decal packs we've had made to be friendly for fitting. So they have air release pockets in the sticky film. So if there is a little bit of air in there, it is actually quite easy to remove. It also makes them much easier to lay. And there we have it. Now you should find from initial inspection that if you release the bonnet section, it should still all line up. Sorry, the nose section. It should still all just line up. Now that the bonnet's in our hand, place it on your toes so that we don't end up with the stripe at the bottom on the floor. And we're going to neatly fold this leftover piece of stripe over the lip of the bonnet and stick it to the underside of the bonnet. Then turn your bonnet over, once again, placing it on your toes and do the same at the other side. Obviously, once again, you need to make sure that the underside of your bonnet is clean in the contact areas to make sure that it stays stuck. And that's it. Now, before we pull our protective cover off these stripes, we're just going to line up the scuttle. So pop your bonnet back on. You should find that they've lined up beautifully. And then we're just gonna line up this last bit. So just looking at the stripes, you can see where they'll match here at the front. Now that doesn't mean we've got it straight. So just tack it in place and then come and peer down the line just to make sure that it's running true. So then we're just going to fix our anchor. So once again, we're just peeling back our stripe and taking the backing paper off down towards the anchor and then that same motion of cutting the paper from the middle. And then again, we're just gonna fold it around the edge, which is easier done with your fingers really. And like the bonnet, this will tuck underneath the scuttle and we can trim off any excess later. But for now, we'll just stick that to the underside of the scuttle. Now we're going to remove your anchor Peel the rest of this off and apply. And hopefully you'll find like this that we have them perfectly lined up as we originally intended. Make sure you fold this down following the contour of the scuttle panel and stick it down. So now we can start peeling off our skin. Now when you peel this off, Pull it 
straight back towards you. If you try and lift it upwards at this kind of an angle, it's gonna try and pull the sticker off the bodywork. So if you keep it flat and pull it backwards in line with the stickers, then it will keep it down nicely. And just careful as you go around the edges, because again, it's very easy to pull those off. So just use your finger just to pull that away. Now I tend to get both sides done before you really get into it. You should now be able to just peel these Take your time with this. It's easy to pull it badly and, and then pull a load of air bubbles into it. Pull from the center in a nice clean motion for the best result. And there we go. Now that we know the bonnet is done and still lines up with the nose cone, we're gonna stick the nose cone section. And once again, we need our anchor. Now in this case, we have a stripe in place here already of masking tape which we're just going to add to to strengthen it. We're going to remove this upper piece of masking tape and start applying upwards. Once again we're going to remove the backing paper from our stripe. Just make sure that the stripe stays on the clear section and fold that backwards all the way down to our anchor. Pull this this way, keep some tension in the middle, and then from the anchor, we're gonna slide our squeegee forwards, straight down the middle, and then from there, splay outwards. And then when we get to the lip, just make sure that it's stuck down right over the lip, following the contour of the nose cone. Now we're going to remove your anchor and any other bits of masking tape which you've used to hold the nose cone in place. We're just going to apply the rest of it. Now it's worth saying you will need a heat gun for this section, particularly if you have these 310 style stripes. You can get away with it with the twin super light stripes, but because of the contours of the nose cone, it will try and bunch up on its way down. And a little bit of heat will help to free that up. And then as we start to get down here, you will find that it will start trying to bunch. Yeah, so, so we see here how it's now starting to pull up in the middle. So I'm gonna take our heat gun careful with this you don't want to get things too hot because you can damage the stripes by overheating them but just get it really nice and warm proper pressure in the middle pull it down and all the time at the sides try and splay them outwards and again as we come over the nose pull it outwards as you turn it over the nose This is why you need to take your grill out before you start this job. And there we go, that's your nose on. Now we're gonna fit the side decals. Now, as you can see, we've already removed the exhaust here. If you need help and guidance removing your exhaust, do just refer to our exhaust and catalyst video. The side stripes come in a single piece. Now the side with the exhaust is the more difficult one. Start at the back. Now I leave around a two inch gap between the bottom of the car and the bottom of the stripe. There are no hard and fast rules on the height that these stripes should be set at. So put it wherever you think it looks best. Make sure you leave an overlap heading towards the rear wheel arch. We will need that later on. Apply a little piece of masking tape straight across the stripe at that end. Leave your gap at the bottom. And again, make sure that you've got this overlap at the back and just stick that loosely to the side skin of the car. We're then going to come to the front by the exhaust end and stick the other end up. Yep. 
There'll be a little bit of sticking and unsticking while we get this straight. We're now going to smooth the stripe out. So from your anchor point at the back, rub your hand along the Caterham logo and forwards. This will pull any slack out. Now there's a join in the chassis here where the car will slope forwards. So it's often worth putting an extra anchor just before that join so that we're dealing with this straight edge before we get to the curve. Then from here, we carry on. Now we can see immediately here, the stripe is starting to bulge, which means that it's not completely straight from this anchor point to this one. So again, just rock this forwards. And as you get to the tape, unpeel it, let the stripe take its own shape and then re-anchor. Now the exhaust is going to be in the way on this car but we'll have to just feed this in as far as we can and then cut it behind the manifold. Now that we're ready to put the section on the front, just offer up the stripe so you can see how long it would be. Some people will use the full section and elongate the stripes, but I don't like to do that. So we can see that we're going to be removing roughly this much of the stripe. So we're going to be offering this up around here. Now, some front sections come in multiple pieces. If you have super light stripes, they'll have a checkered flag section, which you put on separately, which actually is even easier than this is. Move your backing paper back to the anchor. We then simply remove your anchor and remove your backing paper. Again, careful here because there are lots of small pieces which could come off with the backing paper and they need to stay on the clear face. Push that forward and stick it down. We're now gonna trim this piece off at the back. So take your sharp knife, stick it as far in as you can and carefully slide this down cutting your stripe away behind the rubber wheel arch seal and this will just pull off. Then just make sure that that's still firmly stuck in and remove your topping. Now I peel downwards diagonally as you go over the letters just to ensure that they stay stuck as well as possible and just take your care every time you get to a new letter it's easy to pull them away and once they're away it's difficult to Get them back down nicely. And those are your side stripes. So, so the back is, is quite a lot easier than the rest of the car um, because obviously it's a single piece and there aren't, uh, there aren't any obstacles. Uh, it's particularly easier if you've removed your number plate and the poppers on the back panel. I would recommend taking the effort to, to do that. Um, the main thing is about keeping it straight. And the reality is the best way to make sure you do keep it straight is with a spirit level. Um, from a judging point of view, you can get a tape measure out and try measuring to fixed points, but you'll find with caterums that none of the fixed points are very easy things to measure. Poppers can be in different places because they're all drilled by hand. Similarly, even roll bar locations should be, should be in the middle, but they aren't always. So generally speaking, I will do this part by eye, looking straight through to the stripe at the front, keeping the top as our focus point, and then using a spirit level to make sure that the stripe at the bottom is straight. It's very difficult when you do this not to end up with air bubbles somewhere. If we've done a good job, there should be no more than a few across the whole sticker kit. Um, but for those occasions where you do, we see here we've got a little air pocket which hasn't gone down brilliantly. Now, because it's right in the middle and not easy to push towards any edges, first, always try and do that if you can, but we don't want to wreck the decal kit. So. What we're gonna do is take the corner and just poke a tiny hole into one side of the, of the bubble. And then using your squeegee, 
with a microfiber cloth on it now that we've removed the top layer just push that out now because these uh, decal kits do have air release in them then some of the smaller bubbles will disappear of their own time just by being out in the sunshine and being able to settle so you know if you do end up with a few bubbles here or there don't panic you'll probably find they'll sort themselves out and there it is isn't it amazing how much a simple decal kit has completely transformed the appearance of this car now this owner has chosen to replicate one of the most famous and iconic motorsport liveries of history porsche golf racing what's your favorite motorsport livery let us know in the comments below and if you'd like us to deliver you a decal kit that will help transform your car in the same way, get in touch with us. From a fitting application point of view, remember those key tips. It's really, really important to make sure that the car is immaculately clean before you start fitting decals. And the more you can remove before you start, the less you'll have to trip you up along the way. So that's it for this edition of Seven Questions. If you've got questions of your own, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, you can email us at 7q at turn7.co.uk. Until next time, goodbye.